yes, we're going to get started in, in one minute, in a couple of minutes. We're going to wait for people to keep, keep joining us. Um, in the meantime, we have a couple housekeeping things you'll see on the screen here. We'll, um, you aren't going to be able to see yourselves or each other. You're just going to see Christopher and myself. Um, you're going to be able to chat with us, but you won't be able to chat with other people that are joining us. Um, just the panelists and the hosts today, which just helps us all focus. And we're going to wait a couple of minutes for people to get keep joining us. Um, in the meantime, say hi in the chat. Let us know where you're joining from, what school, what part of town, what grade. Uh, my name is Lauren. I work at the NAT. Um, Christopher is joining us, and he'll introduce himself in a little bit as well. He's our special guest. So we'd love to see in the chat. If anybody can share where they're joining us from, what part of town. Um, another fun question is if you have a favorite animal in San Diego. Oh, Natalie, hey, <laughs> welcome. Thanks so much for joining us. Yeah, if you have a favorite San Diego animal, you can share that in the chat as well. How about you, Christopher? Do you have a favorite, a favorite animal? Um... I would say I really like mountain lions. I think those are really cool. Yeah. yeah. Those They're are very majestic. Exactly. Like if you go to like the zoo or something and you see them close up, you're like, wow, they're a big animal. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. I always feel like whenever I see them up close, I'm like, there's a reason they call them lions. They are like substantial yes. and their teeth and yeah. Mm -hmm. like, amazing. We still have them here. Yeah. Um, and we have a hello from um, Carrie, who's a high tech uh, science teacher at High Tech Elementary in North County. Awesome. Thanks so much for joining yeah. us, Carrie. I'm so glad you and your, your class could join us. Let's see. So I'll wait a couple, maybe another, another minute. Um, if you want to poll your students, see if there are any favorite animals in San Diego there, we would love to know. We'll give you a minute to do that and answer in the chat. Um, if you're just joining us now, just so you know, you're not going to be able to see each other. You're just going to be able to see Christopher and I. So the host and our special guest, um, you can chat us, but you're not going to see other people's chats either. So that just helps us all focus on the program. We would love to know your names, where you're joining us from. Do you have a favorite animal uh, that's found in San Diego County? It's definitely... Hard to pick, but I would say I really love coyotes. Um, oh. They're such good adapters to. I love coyotes too. Everything, yeah. yeah. And they're kind of. Um, I used to see. I grew up on Mission Hills, and I would see them all the time in the canyons. And sometimes I'd come out into the street, and they're just. Yeah. Amazing, they're there, and you have no idea until you are <laughs> lucky enough to spot one. Just kind of exactly. Like, what we're talking about today with camera traps, which we'll get into in a minute. All this, all this cool wildlife that's around where we don't necessarily even know it's there because they're so good at, at hiding from us. <laughs> well, I think we can get get started and move on. So um take a minute to to introduce ourselves. I'm my name is Lauren, uh, Lauren Marina Perez. I work at the NAT in our community engagement. Uh, so thanks so much everybody for joining us today. And I am joined by my special guest here, Christopher Gonzalez. So thanks so much for, for joining us, Christopher. I'm gonna let of you, course. Um, tell us a bit more about yourself. It's yeah, so my name as uh, Lauren said, Christopher Gonzalez. So I'm the field coordinator of research and restoration at the San Diego Ripper Park Foundation. So if you guys don't know of our organization, we are an environmental nonprofit um, dedicated to creating a better future for the San Diego River. Um, so that kind of runs between like Mission Valley, Ocean Beach, through Santee, Lakeside, all the way to Julian. So close to those Julian pies that we all love. Um, yeah. And then one cool fact about me is before my position um, in San Diego, I was able to work in four different states, um, protecting and monitoring different plants and animals. That's very cool. What can I ask what states those were? Yeah, so I worked in Montana, Oregon, Nevada, and California. 
Wow. Yes. Are so all of those Western states that we're seeing uh, from there, there? Yes. Yes. A couple of them are. Yeah. The two on the left are from Oregon. Yeah. Oh wow. Cool. Yeah. Very cool. Okay. Awesome. So I'd love to know a little bit more about kind of what we're what we're going to dive into today with you. Yeah. So the topic, um, I'm sure many of you guys know, is caught on camera, wildlife when no one's watching. So kind of three questions that's going to be the um, gateway kind of through the presentation is what is a camera trap? Um, how do scientists use them? And why are they important? So I hope after this talk, um, you guys will know a bit more about wildlife camera traps and then how they are um, important to science in general. So firstly, I kind of want to just define what camera traps are before we dive into everything. So a camera trap is a um, camera that is automatically triggered by an animal. So think of a camera that maybe some of you, your family has at your front door, um, right? You guys have like ring or blink. So those cameras that you guys have at your front door are very similar to what we're doing um, out on these wild areas, right? So when in your guys' cases, right, on your front door, when you have a camera, it's triggered um, by a delivery guy dropping off an Amazon package, right? So in terms of camera trap, um, it's a little very similar, right? Instead of a delivery guy, it might be who's knocking, right? Is it a deer, like in this photo? Is it a skunk? Is it a rabbit, right? Um, so in terms of camera traps, it often allows us to understand um, what animals live in the area. Well, I like to see sometimes on like next door app and things, mm -hmm. people sometimes even catch animals on yes. their, their door yes. cameras. I've seen the mountain lions in LA and stuff, which uh -huh. is pretty remarkable. Yeah. And like, that's the same principle that um, these camera traps are. Um, but we place them in these more remote wild areas. So where people wouldn't necessarily be all the time to get to see them. Anyway. Exactly. Yes. Cool. So a next, next thing I just want to define real quick are wildlife corridors. So a wildlife corridor is a strip of natural habitat connecting populations of wildlife otherwise separated by development um, uh, such as roads or housing. So in terms of camera trapping, right, my organization and many others, we often place these camera traps uh, in these wildlife corridors as there's more likelihood um, we'll catch different animals and more animals. And just so we can understand, uh, firstly, is it a wildlife corridor? And second, what animals are we able to see, right? The whole thing with camera traps is um, we don't know what's out there, right? Um, and these camera traps allow us to understand um, what animals are actually present. Very cool. I didn't know that um, before I started working at the museum, things like wildlife corridors existed. But yes. Animals might more, be more likely to be found like in very specific, almost like animal freeways or roadways yes. that they might be being funneled into, which is a really cool idea. Uh huh. Yeah, I love that. Um, an animal freeway. I love that. Yeah. How you said that. So my first question, right, is what is a camera trap? So we talked about what a camera trap is, the definition. So camera traps, right, are often set up along these different wildlife corridors, and in some cases, game trails. So um, at the San Diego River Park Foundation, um, we primarily capture photography, so photographs. Um, but on, on occasion, our cameras capture videos. So maybe some of you guys are asking why photography, why um, videography, right? So in terms of photography, it allows us to kind of tell us what animals are present. Um, but in videos, if we capture videos, this might tell us what the animals are actually doing. So more about their general behavior. And we're going to talk about that later on too. So on the left image, um, we have an image showing one of our camera traps uh, in action. So this one's placed on a tree. A lot of times they are. 
So in the middle, we have a coyote that was actually photographed by that camera on the left. Mm -hmm. So um, you can see this is Haley or um, Lauren's favorite animal, right? It's one of my favorite animals too. Um, and then on the right image, I'm going to take a few seconds. Um, and I just want you guys to see if you can spot our wildlife camera. So before um, we show it to you, I just want to say that a lot of times wildlife cameras are very camouflaged, right? We don't want things to see them. Um, so if you want to press it, Lauren. Okay. So there it is, right? So often um, we try to place our cameras so that they're unseen if someone's walking by, right? Like for you, maybe you guys saw it, but again, it's trying, it's camouflage, right? Just like that coyote is in that middle picture. It's kind of hard to see. Same thing with these camera traps. Yeah, I definitely think if I were hiking on that path, I wouldn't, I would miss it. I wouldn't be looking for it. Staring exactly. at the picture is a little different, but yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They really do camouflage there. Yeah. So now we, I just kind of want to talk about the general processes and steps of camera traps, right? So first, right, we place our camera trap in the wildlife corridor. Um, the camera takes photos of different animals. It collects information. Um, we gather that information, and that allows us to learn more about wildlife and animals moving forward. So again, there's three steps, right? We take a photo, we collect information, and we learn about wildlife. So that's kind of the general steps that um, our organization and many other organizations uh, do. So here are a couple different animals we have captured, um, and these are all based in San Diego County, right? So we have mountain lions, um, which are big cats and can weigh more than 100 pounds. Um, in the middle photo, we have gray foxes. Um, this photo, we actually have a photo of a mom on the left, and then we have two um, cubs on the right. Um, which is really adorable to see. And then we also um, capture many different birds. Birds obviously fly, but a lot of times they land and sometimes they trigger wildlife cameras. So we have uh, California quail on the top right, and we have the greater roadrunner, so, which can run more than 25 miles per hour. So I think that's really cool. A little bird like that can run that quickly. Yeah. I've often seen them, but it's hard to get a picture of them. <laughs> yes. Because they're like out. The second they see you, they're gone. <laughs> yes, exactly. And like these camera traps allow us to take photos of these very um, rare, not rare, but more obscure animals that we wouldn't see. Yeah, I remember talking to a ranger at Mission Trails and she's saying that they had a, a mountain lion there and she'd worked there for over a decade, but she'd never actually seen it. Oh, yes. You yeah. know, they're very elusive. So <laughs> definitely. They could be there and you wouldn't even know. Yeah. So we have a couple more uh, images of animals. And again, in San Diego. So we capture mule deer um, and bobcats. Um, so if you did not know, bobcats get their name from their tail. So if you look at both of those photos, they have that short tail and it appears to be cut or another term is bobbed. Um, and from there, that's why they get bob cat. So that, that's just a little cool fact for you guys. Why do they call bobcats? It's because of their bobbed tail. Yeah. We used to have um, a bobcat at the museum, but he preferred to be called Robert. Robert, yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so our first uh, pop quiz, um, do you see an animal? Um, if so, what is it? Um, and then uh, we'll be putting that in there, right? So we have A, um, mountain lion, B, a cottontail rabbit, C, raccoon, or D, no animal is there. So we'll give you guys a few moments to take a look at that photo and see if there is an animal. Um, yeah, pretty cool. And you should be seeing a poll where you can answer. Oh, I'm sure. seeing a couple of answers here. A couple of people have chosen mountain lion. 
Um, I don't see any any takers for cottontail rabbit, raccoon, or no animal is there. So, oh, one raccoon. Okay. Mm -hmm. Let's see. I think it's pretty. Maybe a couple more. We can do like a countdown. I'll count down from <laughs> five for people to get their their poll in there and make sure everybody gets a chance. So five, four, three, two, one. Okay, we can end the poll and share the results. We're seeing um, most people Most people chose mountain lion, which I'm really like impressed by. Yeah, I'm impressed too. So the correct answer is mountain lion. So um, there it is, right? On that bottom right corner, it's looking at its head and you can see its ear and it's slightly its snout, right? So um, often when we collect photos, we have um, people, um, a lot of volunteers help us sort those photos, right? So firstly, they're trying to see if they're able to identify if an animal is present or not in the photo. And if so, what animal is it is. So it looks like many of you guys um, would be gate uh, great camera trap sorters. So that's yeah. really awesome. And then one other thing I wanted to point out with this photo too is a lot of these other photos that we've seen are during the day, um, but this photo is taken at night. So again, camera traps can take photos during the day and during the night. And in, uh, in this case, it's using infrared to capture this animal. Oh, okay. That's cool. Um, I was wondering too about the sorting of all the pictures. Uh -huh. um, like how many pictures are people looking through? Because it seems like if you're looking through a lot of pictures, it would kind of be tedious. It could take a long time <laughs> or it would be easy to miss things if you weren't like didn't have the good eyes of people like in our audience, you know? Yeah, well, yeah, our audience were really good. So that's great to see. But again, I think it's, you build up um, like how to look for photos, right? You you can look and if an image or a shape changes in the photo, you're mm -hmm. like, your eye catches that out instantaneously. And like, okay. what is that? Um, on average, I would say some people get um, a couple hundred, maybe like 500. And maybe sometimes they get like, a thousand photos to sort. So wow. um, it depends on the location, but mm -hmm. yeah, 100, 200 to maybe a thousand even. Right. Because sometimes they're taking pictures if it's like a leaf blue or something yes. like, you know. Yeah. So if, and this, yeah. let's say in this photograph, right, we have that tree just at that base of that mountain lion that tree is swaying back and forth, mm -hmm. that movement of that tree might trigger this camera. Okay. Um, in this case, it was a mountain lion. Yeah. Very cool. That's so cool. And it's just it's like it's sitting down in the grass, which is pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> so our next question is, how do scientists use camera traps? So uh, camera traps are used by scientists to understand what animal, what animals are present, and absent, right? So in this photo, um, it just kind of shows a great way um, that what camera traps are for, right? So camera traps are a great way to understand um, animals without hurting their home. So as you can see on this right photo, um, we have someone installing a camera trap. Um, he'll leave it and allow it to take cool photos and he'll come back um, in a month or a couple of weeks. And that's all that we need, right? So we're not like hurting their home at all, just we're putting a camera, it takes photos and so forth. Um, our next photo um, is really cool. So camera traps allow us, allow scientists to understand animal behaviors. So in this photo, we actually have two male mule deer uh, rutting. Um, so rutting means when two male mule deer are fighting to win over females or territories. So you can see that they have their antlers locked. So that's a really cool photo that we were able to capture. Um, another thing that we look at is camera traps are used to understand um, specific animals health and location. So in this case, we have a collared mountain lion. If you guys see it's walking back and it has that black um, collar. So I'm sure many of you guys have seen those that before, right? So in terms of camera trapping, 
it allows us to understand their physical um, health and location. Um, so if this mountain lion crosses this camera, um, maybe we would be able to see if it's malnourished or it has um, it's not eating right or something is wrong with the collar maybe. So it just allows us to know more information about this animal. Um, and then in the next photo, we, uh, in addition to capturing these wild animals like this mule deer and this mountain lion, it also allows us to capture these domestic animals such as cows that we have on this photo. So I don't, cows um, in the environment can cause different harm. So these cameras allow us to understand um, these non-wild animals and how they move in these areas. And then in our last photo, I just kind of want to point to like all the different ways that um, camera traps allow scientists to understand um, nature and these animals, right? Um, if we go back, right, it allows us to understand animal behaviors. It allows us to understand specific, um, maybe collared mountain lions health and location. It allows us to understand these domestic um, non-wild animals by not hurting their home. So I think that's really cool. That is really neat. And I also, I want to point out here that picture, the last picture of everybody in the field reminds me of how um, I think a lot of people think, you know, scientists and researchers and people helping wildlife are kind of in a lab or maybe mm -hmm. um, aren't necessarily out and about in, in the natural world, but you guys have to like hike out there with all your gear and it's pretty uh -huh. rough and tumble. And sometimes you're camping out there for days. And so it's a pretty um, cool job where you get to be outside a lot, which I think yeah. is really neat. And it's cool that all you guys that joined today, obviously you have some sort of passion in with wildlife. So this is always a possible career for you guys to do in future, which is very awesome. Yeah. And I love it. I'm sure Lauren loves it too. <laughs> okay. So our next uh, quiz that we have is um, what wild animals do you think we capture most on our camera traps? So, so think about your kind of day-to-day -day life, maybe. Like what animals do you see in San Diego? Uh, county when you guys are out and about. Um, again, these camera traps allow us to understand what animals we maybe don't see. Um, so it might be a trick question. So we have a couple of choices. We have bobcats, mountain lions, um, different birds, mule deer, gray foxes, rabbits, or other. So other means one of these uh, animal species that we didn't list uh, prior. So maybe a raccoon or uh, coyote, these type of animals that we didn't list. Yeah. And I wonder, I like, would imagine give an, an animal that's like, we have a lot of those animals. Mm -hmm. so it could be hard to know that if you aren't familiar yeah. with the camera trap data. Uh -huh. Yeah. <laughs> or just familiar in general. Like, what animals do we have a lot of? <laughs> yeah. And yeah, I feel like exactly. this gives a good like baseline of what animals are out there, right? Like when I was a kid, I didn't know that we had um, mountain lions in San Diego, right? Like lions seem like they're in Africa, right? But we yeah. actually have a species of big cat in San Diego, which I think is really cool. Mm -hmm. Like gray foxes. I just thought like from cartoons, there was like, like the red fox, right? Like, mm -hmm. um, and all those different cartoons that we saw. Um, but we actually have a totally new, different species of gray fox that we saw with the mom and the cubs. Yeah, I didn't know that either. I would have been yeah. blown away. And now I see people post um, gray foxes, like if they live on the side of a canyon or mm -hmm. sometimes they nest or den under their porches. Yeah. Um, which is really cool. To, I mean, it would be amazing to get to see that, so. Definitely. Um, Okay, so I think we can do a countdown here. I'm seeing um, it's like a pretty even split right now between mountain lions, birds, mule deer, and rabbits, which is oh, very cool. Yeah, which is really cool to see, um, which are all like all great guesses. So uh -huh. I'll do a countdown from five to make sure everybody gets their their answers in. So right now is your, your final chance. 
five, four, three, two, one. Okay, we can end the poll and show the results. And yeah, ah. an even split. Even split. Birds so to your rabbits. Cool. Yeah. If we go to the next slide. Um, the answer is mule deer. Mule so deer. the group that chose mule deer, awesome. Um, in this photo, we actually have um, a mother and it's fawn, little Bambi walking behind it. So mule deer is the number one uh, animal that we see. And if we can go to the next slide. Yeah. So here's kind of the data um, behind that. So if you look here in 2021, mule deer near counted for nearly half of all mm. animals captured. So if we think about a whole dollar, that's 50 cents, right? Um, so that's that's a lot compared to a lot of the other species, right? Um, so we actually captured over 2,000 different images of mule deer. Oh, so wow. Lauren was asking me how many um, photos do we have to sort through? Or well, we just, someone, someone had to sort 2,000 different images of mule deer. So that's really cool. Just the mule deer, wow. Yes. That's a lot to get all these numbers. Mm -hmm. That's so cool. Yeah, and then some of you guys said um, rabbits or birds. So those those are up there, but not to the same extent. So I think one cool fact I love about mule deer, I feel like they get overlooked a lot of times, is they can run really fast. So they can reach speeds of up to 45 miles per hour, which is wow. like, you can almost go on the freeway with that speed. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I didn't realize that about them. That's yeah. pretty amazing. When you're, I, this is kind of like a random question you might not know, but when you're capturing photos of them, like I'm seeing a lot of photos of a single one, do you, uh -huh. are they often together in large groups? We do or have photos, solitary? they're usually solitary, but we do okay. actually have photos of sometimes where they're just a large group. I remember okay. this year, last year, we, I think we had like six different mule deer in one shot. I didn't add it to this presentation, but um yeah, they definitely come into large congregations sometimes. Okay. I yeah. didn't realize they were so solitary. I thought I always thought of deer as like always being in a large, uh -huh. like a herd or something. So yeah. Neat to learn something new. So our last question is why are camera traps important, right? We talked about how scientists use them and what are camera traps. So why are camera traps important? So camera traps allow us to understand and learn about what animals are present. So their relative abundance. So abundance, if you guys don't know, is the total number of animals in an area. So I'll repeat that one more time. Abundance is the total numbers of, number of animals in an area. So that's kind of like their general presence, but then also how many are there, right? So uh, most wildlife, right, requires sufficient access to land for to sustain a healthy population, right? Just like you and I, we need um, food, we need place to sleep. So do, do these animals like this bobcat that we have on this photo. So here at the San Diego River Park Foundation, um, we use these wildlife cameras to inform um, conservation practices. So one practice, right, we talked about is we often place these cameras in these wildlife corridors. Remember these wildlife corridors? It's these areas where a lot of animals, mo most animals um, cross through, right? It's a corridor. So um, uh, these land managers, right, um, the San Diego River Park included, um, it can inform us on maybe creating a restoration project. So if a land is not fully healthy, right, if they don't have enough um, plants to eat or enough water, um, a restoration project might aim to help that area. So just a simple restoration project that um, we can do it just includes planting native plants, right? Um, just planting a few plants might really help uh, what um, is there. I have a question in the chat. Um, I don't know if we want to answer that now, Lauren. Yeah, yeah, go for it. So what makes a good wildlife corridor? So that's a great question, Sarah. Um, but we, uh, what makes a good wildlife corridor, right? So a big thing is um, 
water is a big key resource in San Diego. So in San Diego, this year is kind of an exception. Um, but a lot of times I feel like maybe your parents or you hear on the news, San Diego and California is in the drought, right? Um, and often water is a um, something that animals need. So a good wildlife corridor might be a stream or a river that allows um, these animals to move more freely um, than other areas. Another thing is the vegetation. Um, with water comes more vegetation that is better for animals to eat. So mule deer loves more of these grasses rather than um, like these more woody species, let's say like uh, coastal sage scrub and these type of more woody species. Cool. That was a great question. And I also, yeah. so I thought another one too, that says, looks like the collared mountain lion is the same, is in the same area as your last mountain lion pole photo. So a couple. Oh, yes. That's back. a good observation. Yeah. So again, um, like some, in terms of collared mountain lions, um, researchers um, based in UC Davis, so that's up in Northern California, they actually collar certain mountain lions in San Diego, just so they can understand the general population in San Diego. So some mountain lions are collared and some of them aren't. Um, and you can see that they intermingle. So what you would say, it looks like collared mountain lions are in the same area as the last mountain lion. That's a good thing, right? It allows researchers to have a better baseline, a better understanding of how these animals move, right? So that, that reaffirms their hypothesis. I'm sure mm -hmm. you guys are learning that in second grade and stuff, but yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the, um, it's interesting to see how all that information, so the, the collars that help you track where they're going and then adding that with the photos that maybe you're seeing some behavior um, as well, it gives you a more yeah. complete picture of these really. It, yeah, like, similar behavior. Exactly, right? Like they're walking in these same areas. So obviously this might be a wildlife corridor that these mountain lions are using. So these researchers with that collar and then it allows with these other photos, allows them to understand uh, a better picture, right? It's kind of like a broken up puzzle. Um, and each person is putting a little a jigsaw puzzle. And then at the end, we have a beautiful photo of a mountain lion in a great habitat, right? So that's what they're trying to do. Very cool. I've seen um, there's a project too on iNaturalist where people can share photos of wildlife where they're looking at, um, which is sad, roadkill. But it shows where um, if you look at a map where those photos were taken and a lot of the animals are trying to cross the road at the same point. So that's like, that helps scientists see, okay, maybe we need to put in a wildlife corridor there so they can help like get over the road um, because exactly yes. took it away at one point. So uh -huh. we need to yeah. replace it. <laughs> yeah, that's a great point. Okay. Another poll, oh, yeah. So our last question um, is why are camera traps important? So um, we'll put the poll up really shortly. Um, but before for that, we can just look at this photo. So this is actually a, a photo of two mountain lion cubs. It looks like they're playing. Um, if you see like sequentially of these photos that are actually moving um, further, further away from the photo, but it's really cool to see um, these mountain lions that are becoming more rare in San Diego have these cubs. So I think that's really cool. Mm -hmm. And yeah. very cute. Yes. Yeah. Adorable. <laughs> it is to see them like frolicking together, running somewhere. Yeah. Super cool. So let's see here. Oh, three. Okay. You should be so, seeing the poll now. Yeah. So we have why are camera traps important, right? So we have A informs us on the presence or absence of animals. Um, B allows us to collect information without disturbing the animal's home. C, able to investigate different animal behaviors or D, all of the above. And while we wait for 
uh, people to put in their answer. I see that Carrie had a question. Um, can you give examples of questions asked hypothesis of scientists using camera traps? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So a simple question maybe is, do we have mountain lions, right? Um, that's just a simple question that uh, we can ask ourselves is, do we have mountain lions or another species that people might be interested in, right? It's just kind of a question um, that scientists use, something that might be a bit more sophisticated, I guess, or a little more challenging for scientists to use is the number of um, animals or um, movement, right? Um, a lot of times animals are moving back and forth across these areas. So a scientist might hypothesize um, and ask using camera traps, how does uh, these animals move within this area? Right, so we can place camera traps at different locations, um, and we'll be able to see these animals move across that area. Very cool. Uh, okay. I think I can do like a a countdown for our poll. I'm seeing a lot of the same answer, which I think people's good to see. Um, yeah. And also I'll count down from five. If you want to answer the poll, now's the time. Five, four, three, two, one. Okay, let's go ahead and run the poll and share the results. So awesome. You guys all said all of the above. So you guys were, you guys learned something today, right? So why are camera traps important? So all of them are true. So we can just talk about them a little briefly again. Um, it informs us of presence or absence of animals, right? So remember when I def defined abundance, so the number of animals um, in an area. So it allows us to understand that. Um, it collects information without disturbing animals, right? We have that photo of that guy placing a, a camera on a tree, right? It's very um, low impact of the disturbance level. And then C, we have able to investigate different animals' behaviors. So in this photo, we can observe um, these mountain lion cubs, but previously we talked about mule deer fighting, um, rutting, remember? So all these are true and that's why scientists use them and that's why they're important. Very cool. Lots of different uses. Yep. And then you guys had questions before. Um, if you have any questions, please answer them in the chat. Um, here's actually one of my favorite photos. Um, well, I've been working here. If you click it, yeah. So it's a bobcat that just caught a large four foot snake for Whoa. dinner. So if you look a little closer, it Whoa. has a snake in its mouth and it's probably close to like four feet. So probably as tall as many of you guys. Um, this little bobcat, remember a little bob tail, you can see it clearly, caught a, lit, a very large snake. And I think that's really cool to see. Like, yeah. so there's an animal behavior, right? Mm -hmm. We're able to see what these animals are eating, right? Otherwise mm -hmm. we might not uh, have information about that. Yeah. I didn't know. Yeah, so I said, did you know bobcats ate snakes? I didn't, and I didn't <laughs> know that. <laughs> No, I, did, I didn't know that either, especially such a large snake too. I would maybe expect like a small snake, but yeah, it's crazy. A really big snake. So uh, we have Sarah asked a question in the chat. What is the coolest or rarest animal you've seen on one of your cameras? Um, I went, I just went to your guys' uh, um, museum, Lauren, and you guys had a lot of this animal there, but I feel like it's pretty rare for us to see, um, but it's the ringtail cat. Mm -hmm. And those are really cool. I was at your exhibit and behind the, um, your guys' is like RV, I forget what those are called. Yeah, um, the Winnebago or no, oh gosh, it's not a Winnebago, but yeah, the stream, the Airstream. Airstreamer, there you go. Yeah, you guys had that recording of like the kids camping. Yeah. And then they were trying to describe the, um ringtail cat and I thought they did a really good job so if if you think of a cat right 
has shrunken down little legs, has more bulgy eyes, big ears, a long bushy tail. Um, so if you guys go to the exhibit, which I really think you guys should, but it kind of just shows the ring tail. You guys obviously had other animals there, but yeah. a ring tail is really cool cat and are not cat, it's not a cat, sorry. Yeah. It's more close <laughs> to like a raccoon. Um, Some people call it, yeah, a ring tail cat though. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. but that's a really cool animal too. Yeah, they're so, I didn't know we had them in San Diego and they're really like elusive and hard to find, uh -huh. you know, but they're adorable. Very so adorable. Cute. Yes. <laughs> yeah. When you asked me what my favorite animal was, I was thinking about saying ringtail, but yeah. Yeah. It's hard to pick, right? Definitely. I'm seeing some really cool um, questions here too. Yeah. Can students have access to your camera trap data to do research with? And if so, can we, where can we find it? How can we help sort data? Yeah, we would love to have you guys' help. Um, so we have like an archive, I think from almost 2011, we started this program. So more than 10 years, we have uh, tons of photos. So depending on how you want to do research with it, we'd be totally happy to um, find a, a research project that maybe your kids can do. Um, and I, I can, I'm sure Lauren can send out my contact information after this meeting. If you guys wanted to have access to that, you can email me and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, Share and my then, email in the chat here. Yeah, that's and perfect. And then um, feel free to email me and I can connect you with, with Christopher. Yeah, and then can we help sort photos or data? We would love to have that um, too. Um, it sounds like from that little quick mountain lion sorting, sounded like you guys are totally uh, awesome at picking out what animals are. So that would be really cool too. Yeah. Um, and um, then what kind of snake did the mountain lion catch? Um, um, it's kind of hard to see, but a large snake like that, I would probably say um, a garter snake. Mm. Yeah, I'd probably say that. Um, if maybe I zoomed in, um, you might be able to see, but yeah, I, I'd probably guess um, a garter snake, which is a snake that's pretty common in San Diego that I've seen at my house that can go pretty big, actually, and kind of scary, but they're non-venomous. Mm -hmm. um, oh. and then um, a little bit about the San Diego River Park Foundation um, in the chat we'll input our website about where you guys can volunteer um, and this is just kind of a general um, have our volunteer opportunity so as, as you can see from these photos our organization does a lot um, we're based in San Diego, so maybe people from North County um, might have a bit more trouble, but um, we're more than happy to have you guys come help. But we have family-friendly events like picking up trash, um, little hikes around here that we have on the just right. Um, one of my coworkers, Natalie, led a hike up here, and we get these really pretty views. Um, we have little kayaking events. Our events um, vary a lot, right? My events are more based on research. So these wild animals that we capture, but yeah, if you guys want to volunteer, um, check out this website, um, yeah. and learn how to get involved. All sorts of cool stuff, planting mm -hmm. native plants and yes, even like mural projects sometimes, which is super yes. Cool. No. Yeah. A lot of, a lot of cool family of family friendly events and then mm -hmm. or sciencey events. If you guys yeah. love science, or if you guys want to get your hands dirty with art, plenty of cool stuff. Mm -hmm. And then, yep. yeah, in the chat, we just dropped our Facebook group. So if you want to learn more about um, just the some of the photos that we see more frequently, so that just came in. I post these on our Facebook uh, group page. And recently we just caught a cool photo of mule deer, bobcats, mountain lions, all these cool stuff that are happening like this month or even today. Sometimes I get notifications on my phone from these camera traps. It's like, wow, look at what cool animals we saw today. Right. It's like, it's really cool to yeah. see. That's super neat. Very fun to look at. 
Um, and like Christopher shared, you can come visit us at um, at the net with the new camera trap exhibition caught on camera. So all sorts of really beautiful photos of of animals that have been caught uh, when when they thought nobody was watching, which is very fun. And you get to learn a bit about how scientists and researchers use camera traps um, a bit more and yeah. um, just see the really beautiful photos. So definitely. Come visit us. We're also looking if people have caught cameras, uh, caught photos of wildlife. We'd love to see it on your, um, if you have camera traps at home, security devices, those ring cameras, like Christopher mentioned, um, you can submit them to the museum as well. We might share them in, on online or in the exhibit. And then just a general FYI, we are taking a break for, for summer, but we'll have more life youth programs starting up in fall. So check our website um, and see throughout the summer, we'll be updating, updating the schedule for the next school year. And I just really want to say thank you so much, uh, Christopher. It's been so wonderful to have you. And I learned, I learned a lot today and I saw a lot of really cool, cool photos of wildlife and it makes me um, want to get outside and go take a hike somewhere. So, yeah, well, you're welcome. I really appreciate the time to speak to you all today. Um, I hope you guys learned something too. I learned something with my position with, and learning about wildlife cameras. So every day I learn something new too, and that's always very rewarding. Very fun. Yeah. And thanks. Thanks to everybody who joined us. Um, we were going to sign off now. So have a wonderful, uh, Memorial day weekend, everybody. Take care. Thank you, everybody. Thanks. Bye. Bye.